Hello, everybody. It's Friday night and it's weekender time once again. This week, Ben takes us through a garage company that doesn't even have a garage. Free explores some first empires. I take a wild swing at Slain. And Justin asks the important questions. All this and so much more on the weekender, along with a chance for one lucky viewer to pick up a copy of Tobruk, the new mid war starter set for with Flames of War from Battlefront, uh, jam packed full of tanks, along with the rule book and two forces. So if you want to get started in Flames of War and want a chance to win, all you need to do is be a subscriber to the channel, pop a comment below on the YouTube video, and if you can share us around, that would be terrific. Otherwise, sit back, relax, because your weekend starts here. Hello everybody, we are back once again for another fantastic Friday full of fun-filled news. Oh. And this week, Free, Ben and Justin are joining me on my meander through the world of tabletop gaming. How's it going, kids? Very good, very good. That was a lot of alliteration for a Friday there, was, Jerry. Wasn't it? Yeah. That, that was, yeah. It's like crunchy. <laughs> well, I mean, as soon as we're done with the show, my, I'm on vacation. I'm just <gasps> I get a week off. Outrageous. <gasps> yes, yes. I, have, I am escaping for a week. How dare you? Yeah. So it'll be, it'll be one of those vacations where you make plans to do lots of things and then you don't do anything. And then the you go, Why did the, oh. where did the time go? <laughs> four well, hour nine, long show then. Nine whole days of freedom. <laughs> <laughs> it's one way of doing it. <laughs> what are you going to do then? You're going to do anything? You're going to do nothing oh. at all? You're just going to play computer games, aren't you? Yeah, Total War Warhammer 3 is dropping, and I'm still looking at Dying Light 2, which is mm -hmm. tempting me. And it's oh, like, yeah, just... oh, it looks so good. I'm watching a couple of Let's Plays, and it's just like... Mm, How's I... your Path of Conquest army coming along? No comment. It, Cut it's... the time off. Yeah, I know. Although it's probably going to end up like the the inn I built for Foreground that took me an entire year to build. That's outrageous. That is... We're getting Deloitte levels of hobby time that's required in order to create things mm. so. no it was i got halfway through the build and just left it alone for a year Very and then we me. needed it so i finished it <laughs> ridiculous i had hobby time last week <gasps> I, you did. I, I played a game oh, you can yes. see me playing a game oh, if you can, if yes. you've got nothing to do for four hours because yeah. that's how long it took us yeah. I know. Well, I did oh, three hours forty-five. What does your t-shirt say, Jerry? People really enjoyed it as well. Don't mind me. I'm just going to go and play with my tiny fighting men. <laughs> <laughs> what my t-shirt says. You do have the best t-shirts. <laughs> there we go. You, you could jump in and have a look at uh, our Rook's Drift mm. anniversary when I played against Paul, um, and see whether or not the British managed to valiantly win their VCs, or whether I threatened to hit Paul in the face with a plastic tray if he killed one of my men. I'm not saying one of those things definitely happened. Wow. You can do that. It was great fun, yeah. I liked it. I haven't seen frames in the comments at one stage, but, you know. I popped I in. I, I popped in. Saw what was going I'm, on. Yeah, I'm just happy I was fit to build the live stream rig once again, and it was stable. Stable is good. Ooh, ooh. Not that I would have mattered if it went down and we thought at one stage it may have done. It was like, I don't care. I'm just going to keep playing. <laughs> You're just having fun. This is Jerry's game. He's just sharing it with the world on the off chance that someone yeah. might enjoy it. Yeah, that's yeah. <laughs> almost exactly that. Yeah. Ends on a cliffhanger. That's how it Yeah. <laughs> so time will tell whether or not people enjoyed it enough for us to do any more or whether or not I can cope with doing any more. Obviously, the first thing I learned was I could barely cope with fitting into a T-shirt. My God, <laughs> years of lockdown. <laughs> I wonder well. I, I, I still do not. Hibernation a, for the nation. I'll get a moo, moo for the next live stream. Don't worry, you'll be able to see a lot less. <laughs> oh, need, can, you get, can you get yeah. the little white flat cap? Oh, yeah. Or, we, need, we need ponchos. We need OTT ponchos because they cover everything. <laughs> you don't want to look stupid or anything you'd have to go for the white cap otherwise you just look ridiculous <laughs> anyway so uh, with with that out of the way i suppose we should probably get on with the show probably we might just be. go off on a winner yeah. and we're going to kick things off as always with the most important part it's the indie of the week and this week ben 
Mm. You picked one. I, I did, yes. Uh, so I, I was reminded of this while flicking to the internet and going, oh, yeah, these people exist. Uh, and this is uh, Trolls Under the Bridge, which is a very small company uh, out of Czech Republic, Czechia. Um, as their description says there on the homepage, they're a garage company, but they don't, well, really have a garage. So they're just a small company of trolls that well, live... In the back bedroom? <laughs> Yeah, or live under a bridge somewhere, maybe. <laughs> well, the there main... are some gorgeous bridges in Prague. That is true. Gorgeous gorgeous bridges for gorgeous trolls. Um, but um, they make a whole range of different things. Mm. Uh, and they, they cover the gamut of sort of 28 mil all the way down to sort of 6 and 10 mil as well. Uh, but we'll just sort of file through these. And see the, the main reason that I was drawn to these was a lot of the sci-fi stuff that they do, actually. Um, right. So, <laughs> the the sci-fi in particular was very good for me because at the moment I'm obviously looking at lots of kind of inquisitorial stuff if you've been following XLBS mm. and things and so looking through this I was like oh there's some interesting offices and stuff here that could be mm. used uh, because all of the models that they do effectively for this kind of fit into that kind of 40k adjacent mm. sphere I guess you'd say um, so you could use them as alternative commanders in Imperial Guard Astra Militarum forces use them as part of um sort of retinues and everything like that for, for different smaller skirmish games as well. Uh, but fired. That's all yeah. I can say. <laughs> that's, Alan, that's Alan Sugar in the Game Dark Future. It's a beautiful heart. He's Although in, in that version of The Apprentice, the commissar just shoots you. So. <laughs> Karen whips out a bolt gun. <laughs> that makes sense. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, they're really awesome little sculpts and they come from like a nice little team of individuals that sort of just play around with whatever's on their mind, I think, is the, mm -hmm. the sort of main focus of what they do. Um, and yeah, as I said, they'd be very good for those people who are trying to dive in and play around with the idea of, you know, maybe adding unique characters to lead units, like you'd use as obviously in a sort of Adeptus Sororitas force as leader of one of your, your crews or something like that. You could also use it in some role-playing as well if you wanted to. They'd be very good for Wrath and Glory if you were looking to play something like that from Cubicle 7. Mm -hmm. um, all, all made of resin most of the time, so some pretty nice stuff there for you to, for you to play around with and have fun with. Um, I, I, I think the thing that get, got me from it, with it, sorry, was that it kind of sort of takes the, the, the ideas of 40K and sort of the grim dark and plays around with stuff that you wouldn't necessarily think of sort of venturing into which I think is kind of cool mm -hmm. uh, so you've got some really interesting takes on different uh, characters and, and different forces for example like you could see her maybe as sort of like a an inquisitor who's maybe taken a taken on board some xenotech perhaps <laughs> xenos tech of her, to use herself but it's uh, a nice looking figure it mm -hmm. really is yeah very cool I stuff. get the idea that they were sculpting some of this stuff the same point I was collecting sisters um, <laughs> yes, yeah, yeah. because, and we'll see it in the conversion bits. Mm -hmm. There are some Sisters of Battle hands that fit perfectly on the old metal seraphim, yeah, which is handy yeah. because I did a really garbage job <laughs> of converting some of those over, and yeah. now I know I can just get whole hands. Mm -hmm. I can do this thing, yeah. It's, it's an still one of those old complaints is getting enough of specific weapon types sometimes to build a squad loadout. That is true. Yeah. That and they didn't exist when I bought <laughs> well, those yeah. models. The Inferno Pestles were not a thing, and then they made them a mm. thing, and mm. Seraphim only had bolt pestles and one flamer body. Yeah. And I was like, mm, well, that's annoying. Yeah. This is quite cute. Yeah, I really like that's that. That's nice. Nice little for, diorama piece, yeah. For 20, 20 quid for uh, a diorama. Mm that she insets into so you can still take yeah. her out and use her as a gaming piece is absolutely spanking. Yeah. Like metal bits in there as well. Yeah, metal and resin. Yeah. Mm. Very nice. But yeah, it's a, it's a nice little range. The, the sci-fi one is fairly robust. Um, I, I really like a lot of the sort of Astra Militarum-esque stuff that they've mm. done. I think it's really, really cool. One of the things that's always been an issue with the Astra Militarum, well, has become an issue with the Astra Militarum in 40K is obviously that it's all very Cadian based. Yeah. Um, and I, I, I like that these can step into the mix and sort of play around with the idea of what your force is. And then you could always combine these because obviously they're 28, 32 ish mil scale. Yeah. So you could use these with a whole range of other stuff. Like if you use these alongside things from like Victoria Miniatures, for example, I think they work really nicely mm. and could be used alongside a lot of their kind of alternative regiments and stuff. Um, from across the galaxy. I really like the fact that that gas mask just has two sunken pits. 
where his eyes should be. Yeah. 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 He doesn't use the eyes anymore. Mm. They are. I just use my psychic abilities. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. They're <laughs> unnecessary. Yeah. The lieutenant Play, looks really quite cool. nice. Uh, just up a little. Oh well, you've moved on. Oh yeah, well, well, well past that. <laughs> oh, well. oh, nice. Mm. Very good for a rogue trader. Yes, yeah. I like and the gas mask designs. <laughs> Stargrave, this is going quite nicely. Yeah, yeah, oh. definitely could use it for that as well. Yeah, mm-hmm. or yeah. if you were playing a little core space and you want a couple of ultimate characters. Yeah, pretty much. Oh. Yeah. Have a look at the preacher. Mm. It's Jerry. <laughs> it is. It's not probably enough to be me. <laughs> He's also much thinner, apparently. Uh, maybe wearing a girdle. Oh, no, I get it. Because he's wearing his moo moo. That's he's, why he yes. looks thinner. There we go. Yeah. Yeah. He's just finished cutting someone's head off and gone. Are you ready to yeah. read the book now? Oh, well, no, it, it, it's you. more along the lines of going, now, Justin, we talked about the rules. This is the rule. This is what happens when you don't follow the rule. Yeah. I don't, like, lessons, don't like PDFs. Yeah. That's <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's just cool that they've got this really sort of quirky selection of different miniatures for sort of adding to your armies and maybe adding something a little bit different to things. Uh, <gasps> I really liked I- Ichabod, uh, Ichabain Kane, sorry. Uh, it's very cool. It's sort of like an alternative uh, Inquisitor and stuff. And yes, oh. Lemmy. Oh. So, yeah, you, can, you can sing your praises to the great Lemmy. Has had enough of your shenanigans. <laughs> <laughs> a nice, also, a, a cool idea for a pirate captain or something. Mm. Yeah, that could be nice. So, yeah. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. Like it. It very much reminds me of sort of old school Inquisitor art. Yeah. <laughs> um, from even before 54 mil Inquisitor. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Kind of stuff you would have seen in some of the old codexes and stuff, which is quite nice. So, but, yeah. Massive very puritanical cool. hat on him. Exactly, like a stove pipe. Yeah. Um, so th- th- that's uh, most of their sci-fi stuff. Mm-hmm. They do have some fantasy, uh, although that section's more or less built into the sci-fi stuff. Yeah, so it's uh, just yeah. a few there. It's not- nothing too massive. Um, yeah, but yeah, you've got a big chaos boy. I like to think of that as Boris in armor. So <laughs> if Warren actually ever wanted to put some clothes on, <laughs> that would be no, the best. No, way no, to go. no, no, that's. Ben, we, we all know how the that game is played. Never happens. <laughs> ever, 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 ever in a million years. Very never happened. Yeah. Um, but um, the sort of main focus of it, I think a lot of people come to Trolls Under the Bridge for uh, is their six mil stuff. So we'll come to the conversion bits in a bit. But so their six mil vehicles and infantry are really good. So oh. for anyone, obviously, you know, uh, we talked about Epic a couple of weeks ago. Anyone who wanted to dive in and sort of add to some of their forces in sort of the Epic scale of 140,000. They have made a whole bunch of awesome little vehicles for this, and these are the this is the range that they tend to um, update most frequently. Mm. So uh, I I kind of think that maybe they're they're building these because they need them in their own collection, and then they just happen to sell them. <laughs> I mean, not to so. lie, I'm I'm sensing a banhammer incoming. Eh. I don't know. There's loads of people making epic miniatures. Yeah, they've been making them for years. I'm sure no one's oh, well. going to do me. So <laughs> okay, well. Mm-hmm. Also, Dave just made a massive 32 millimeter rhino for his uh, void, his veil touch miniatures. So mm. I'm sure it's going to be fine. All uh, right. So, yeah. but uh, yeah, some really awesome little things in six mil for you to dive in and play around with. Um, sort of looking back at that kind of the classic silhouette of a lot of these vehicles, as opposed to the one now that you get, which has the kind of the hovering quality to them as well. Mm. There's no tracks. You need tracks. You need <laughs> tracks on big tanks. Oh, we are going. So you, we that's you need tracks. <laughs> How dare they are really nice. <laughs> but yeah, they're really nice. Come with different weapon options and everything as well, which is cool. So. With the likes of um, Lizzie Forger doing their game. Yes, yeah. Uh, Could translate so even nice. if you can't get your hands on Epic or if you want to play a bigger game than Epic, uh, this could be a lot of fun. Yes. Uh, nice little Necron bits. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Creepy Crawly. That's yeah. nice. That's Scorpion Ox. Going. So again, it's kind of them. It's them approaching the idea of either fleshing out factions that maybe didn't get the love that they deserved in Epic, mm. or approaching them with new models and that kind of thing, and throwing them into the mix. Um, just so you have got some interesting new things to play around with, really. So, but but I really like them. I think this kind of six mil scale is really cool for. Oh, they, oh, they do. Grim, oh, big, grim yeah, model, yeah. I like it's that. A big clear top. Yeah. Yep. 
Don't use super glue with it. <laughs> nah, just PVA that on. It all be fine. <laughs> no. Then you never um, get that on. I'm definitely digging the designs. Yeah, I think that's the design and the kind of detail on these is amazing, especially for six mil. Mm -hmm. I think vehicles really shine mm -hmm. at this scale, I think. <gasps> yeah, definitely. Because they're achievable to paint. <laughs> Uh, and I think you can have a lot of fun by, with just the use of things like pin washing and, and weathering and stuff just to make them pop, I think. so. I mean, I'm cool. looking at this wondering, could I, you know, do a homebrew for some Battletech rules for this particular vehicle? <laughs> the I'm sure you could, yeah. <laughs> there's, there's probably enough vehicles in the Battletech universe for you to make this into something. So, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Tons of tracks. Mm -hmm. yeah. But, yeah. All the tracks fit the track. <laughs> track, track. Ooh. You've even got blast markers in six mil as well, which I think is very cool. When you've got damage on your approach, on your in your vehicles and things. Some back hack. Mm. Taking down all those flyers. <laughs> but yeah, funnily enough, I don't see any flyers in here. No. <laughs> I'm There's sure they get they might get around to it eventually. But, yeah. Uh, yeah. There's a lot of detail considering it's six mil as well. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, look at that. That's a that's an amazingly detailed tank. Because <laughs> I'm forgetting it's six mil, obviously, because it's not got anything to scout next to it. Mm. So I'm saying, yeah, yeah. Oh. there's some six mil giant fires. <laughs> Again, doesn't probably help too much, but you know, that's quite good. But um, alongside the um, the vehicles, they've also got the six mil infantry as well. Yep. So um, I, I, this is very focused on the. Um, Sort of Astra Militarum once again, all that kind of Imperial Guard style thing. So you've got Kalashins, uh, you've got Jungle Fighters, which is nice. Um, you've got sort of like PDF forces and all sorts of things in there as well at the same time. Uh, but yeah, just playing around with the 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 different kind of troops that you maybe didn't get or didn't see in Epic at the time. I don't know. Yeah, if, just, did they get around to doing Kalashins back then? No, no. So, no. Yeah. Uh, Imperial Guard were very <laughs> Imperial Guard. Right, yeah. Um, but yeah. As to the sort of the proto mm -hmm. um, they used to be called the Imperial Army when they were first released, and they had that sort of look to them, jumpsuits, big helmets, big um, goggles on them, kind yeah. of what the Cadians became. But they never did any of the, the unless Forge World did something wacky. There's something I miss very much is all of the, like, you know, the Valhallans, the Desert Raiders, oh, yeah. all of those guys. I miss mm. seeing those. Yeah. All of the interest. Yes. <laughs> yes. The bland you, generic. You, you can buy them from Victoria Miniatures, obviously, mm. but uh, it would be legal in your official games workshop tournaments. But you could have them and, and look at them and they'd be pretty rather than paying a billion pounds on eBay for them. But, uh, mm. but yeah. Uh, <laughs> there are plenty of people that would love to come back and I think see. Games Workshop do something more with that, but um, you know, thankfully you've got companies like Trolls of the Bridge doing mm. them in six mil and having fun with them, which is quite nice. So it's a very mm. reasonably priced as well. Very, very well, yeah, so. yeah. yeah. That's one of that's one of sorry, go on, Justin. Oh, well, I was just gonna say, I guess at six mil you could do some epically huge like gaming table build. Oh, yeah, because yeah, they're definitely. so small in it. It's like Warren always talks about with that that scaling down makes you zoom out on the battlefield. Mm. Well, that's one that's one of the interesting things about. I think the world of 40k is that they they go on about the fact that there's war happening all the time mm -hmm. uh and yet you only in many cases play out skirmishes between smaller forces on very cramped boards once you start to lower the scale of it you suddenly get the sense of there is only war i think which is quite nice mm -hmm. um but uh but yeah, like the other thing that, do specific infantry bases as well the yeah ones. yeah so they've designed it so that you can just easily just get everything from one place which is quite nice That's um, blade ones. Yeah, but yeah, the, I think the nice thing about six mil, as you were saying, Justin, is the kind of th the sense that you can do, mm. you know, epic. <laughs> yeah. You can make things pop, and it means that you know, when it comes to storing and, and playing with all this stuff, it's a lot easier than trying oh. to store a twenty eight mil army. I've been currently trying to work out a way to put my Iandan force somewhere, <laughs> and I was like, um, <laughs> maybe I'll just put him in a bag. <laughs> the movement trades do not want. So, as someone on Twitter said, um, the carry case that Game Show don't want you to know, and it was just a Plastic, Tesco bag Tesco with bag, yeah. Tesco Can't bag with well. some super glue. Yeah. Oh, right. 
<laughs> Chuck them in there and she'll be fine. <laughs> they all go in with either cotton wool or kitchen roll, and then you bring your super yeah. glue with you to repair them when you reach the yeah. store. Well, <laughs> one of the one of the nice things about doing something like Epic is you could put these in a biscuit tin. <laughs> yeah, you're and if, right. if you really, if you really wanted to, you could just magnetize the bases and just have them all magnetized to the inside yeah. of your biscuit tin, and that'd be great. So yeah, that's clever. That's good. I like it. Do they um, ship to the UK then? Travels onto the bridge. Uh, I would imagine so. Uh, they're a European company, so you might get some import tax. Oh, is type. Czech part of the EU? I yes. don't think Czech's part of the EU. Well, oh, oh yeah, it is. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, don't, I don't ever ask anymore. me. I don't know question. anymore. <laughs> I, I never know the answer to these yeah. questions. Uh, Ray, where I, is this I, place? I remember going there, and you know they didn't use the euro. You don't oh, have to. You know how the UK was in the EU for forty odd years and yeah, didn't and use then the euro. No. You, I did, don't, you don't have to use the euro. Okay, I'm maybe being dumb. Sorry, folks. I'm sure someone will correct us in the comments. Oh, but yeah. they should. Yeah. They should sit. They should ship anywhere, pretty much, uh, yeah. which is quite nice. They've got um, most offices. Yeah. Um, uh, as well as doing the six mil uh, sci-fi stuff, they've also got six mil in fantasy. So, as a lot of people have been doing, oh, sorry, ten mil in fantasy. Mm. So, as a lot of people have been doing right uh, right now over the last couple of well, the last year or so, I think, people have been looking back towards playing 10 mil, I think, at the, at the tabletop and diving into sort of Warmaster scale games uh, as well as things like Fantastic Battles, which obviously, Jerry, you played on the mm. channel. But very cool Let's Play. You, want, you would definitely want to go and check that one out. Um, but these would be perfect for that if you were trying to put together a, um, a, a whatever kind of force you wanted for fantasy, basically. But the, the main focus of what they do here is very much on, uh, like, chaos. Like, chaos is a big theme here. Yeah, uh, There's lots of, like, big marauders and chaos warriors and champions and all sorts of different things. So, yeah. It's a very you nice doing, like, a 10 mil dungeon. Oh, combo. nice. You could, you could do that. I've, I've always yeah. said I think it would be fantastic to scale down um, what you do in D and D or Pathfinder or whatever to sort of fifteen or ten mil, because then the again the dungeon master only has to carry around a small set of things rather than a big bag full of miniatures and terrain and all that kind of thing. So, so yeah, you could easily have some fun with that and individually base these for that kind of thing. Doing a little bit of skirmishy stuff if you wanted to, or just multi base them as they have done here to use in big mass battle games. Mm, again, looking at where you go, yeah. <laughs> Travel travel size wargaming, as we talked about last week. But yeah, um, there's some really nice stuff. Again, really detailed, just the same as their um, their sci-fi miniatures. Uh, lots of stuff packed in there. So it's one of those nice things when, when you see miniatures in this scale where people have obviously taken the time and attention to kind of like focus the arm particular bits. Mm. So you've got like the really cool helmets. They're obviously bought out. The shields are a, ma- a big part of it. So you draws the eye there too. And then obviously you've got the slightly larger than life weapons, which kind of moves things in a slightly more heroically proportional way. But obviously you've got to try and do that when you're playing at this scale, I think. Mm. I mean, Just so that, you've got a little bit of recognizability about things. So Yeah, that's yeah. skull drum. That's big skull. Oh, yeah. I, I like to think it's from a troll or something. So yeah. <laughs> one of these, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Where are they? There we go. The wandering trolls. Yeah. Ah, oh, there you go. I mean, they're yeah. amazing. I absolutely love those. You like those? Yeah. Let's see them at the front. What is that? He's got like a shield for like someone attached to his arm and stuff. I think it was kind of. Ah, oh, cool. it's like battering it's ram. A big battering ram. Yeah. 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 So that's really that's, awesome. That's like his those. poking stick. <laughs> that's, what he, with it. that's what he uses to prod the goblins forward in front of him uh, <laughs> or do you moving. know pesky human get back you exactly yeah <clears throat> but yeah again really awesome little sculpts there showing off what kind of things you can uh, play around I love the descriptions for all this stuff as well mm. like the description is gold food joy of killing <laughs> yes <laughs> why would you join the army <laughs> I don't think a troll could tell you better themselves. Yeah. Archeon needs you. I mean, that needs to be a pro, uh, a post in there. So. I need you for the Swords of Chaos. Yeah. Join now. See this gift voucher. Comes out the tavern the next day. I spent all my gold on eel and the other thing. <laughs> they are yeah. really nice 10 mil. For- this is how I found the website when I was yeah, getting yeah. into Fantastic Battles because I found... A um, couple of units of mounted marauders and some knights, chaos mm-hmm. knights in the roof loft, but nothing else. And I was like, "Oh, no. I could, I could add yeah. these. <laughs> I could do stuff with these." Um, and they're pretty cheap. <laughs> they're yeah, lead rot. Oh, they're beautiful. 
Those no, are cool. Yeah. None of my stuff is lead rot. Also, <laughs> th these aren't lead. The uh, uh, War Master was, was War Master was white metal. Okay, it's, it's one of those things as well. Like, uh, like it, a lot of people feel uh, sort of intimidated by smaller scale stuff, and they're like, "Oh God, how would I ever paint the details on these things?" It's actually a lot easier than you'd think. Like a lot of people in the community have talked about this when we've mentioned small scales before. A lot of it's just block colors and choosing the right ones. And then just doing a few details here and there to kind of break bring them out. And then washes are your friend for all this <laughs> stuff. I also know a lot of people who have just painted sort of six mil, ten mil stuff with contrast paints, and it works a dream. Um, so if you're interested in trying to get things done quickly, that's definitely a medium that you go for. Or obviously, usually, you know, the new quick paints and that kind of thing yep. uh, from, from Army Painter and stuff. So, yeah. And then just spend a little bit more time on your heroes. And fish back, yeah. Bosch, yeah. away you go. In many respects, uh, spray black, dry brush white, and then that shows you what colours you're going to be painting exactly. in what places. <laughs> if yeah. it's not got white on it, then it's a shade and you just leave it black. It's just a big old shadow. Yeah. Walk away from <laughs> it. Yeah. Uh, the last thing I want to show you off is the conversion bits that Jerry was talking about earlier as well. So um, there she oh. is. There you go. That's all the stuff that you would need for sort of glamorising your Ooh. amazing um, Adeptus Sororitas and all sorts of different things. Uh, showing off the different weapons and stuff that you can use to sort of play around with the the different models and things. So, so yeah, mm. there's some really cool stuff in there, especially the big blades and stuff. I love the blades. Yeah. I like the way they've done that picture though. Just doing a really nice paint job only on the conversion piece. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Really nice to pop out. Very nice. Must, must pick up some of those. Yeah, it's great for those people that maybe have those slightly older armies. I think uh, because. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Jerry's right doing a Lloyd this way. Uh, am I going to have to blur out your credit card details? No, no, no it's no. gone. It's gone, Justin. We're safe. It's uh, in the card, the, so I won't forget it. No. Uh, there are there are like four pages of this stuff. Oh, yeah. Link to our pieces. Are we need to we need to show these to Lloyd, Lloyd because he's doing death death court now. Oh, so that'll really annoy him. You can make him hussars now. <laughs> and paint them brightly coloured feathers like a parakeet. <laughs> Are you sending it to him right now, Jerry? Oh yeah, yeah, sent him. <laughs> really annoy him. Yeah, but like, uh, there's one of the nice things about this. I think is that there are so many people that maybe have got miniatures in their collection, me included, where the weapons have come off your your characters or something, mm. or you've got champions and sergeants and stuff for different units, and you're missing that sort of iconic weapon that you thought they should have. I like the fact of going in here and picking up things like, for example, the big thunder hammers mm. or the power swords. Like those would look amazing as slightly different weapons. And because they're so similar to the designs by Games Workshop, like they could easily they, yeah, it's really cool. I love that. Almost like a, yeah. a power sax. Mm, yeah. Actually, yes, especially in the blade, the way the blades end enter. The, yeah, that yeah. it's got that broken edge to it. Yeah, it's really cool. But uh, yeah, there's some really very awesome cool. bits and pieces in there for you to be playing around with. Uh, again, these like big eviscerators and stuff are so cool. They're um, awesome. Like you could easily just strap that to the back of one of your old Inquisitors or something. This isn't just me thinking of ways to use it, mm -hmm. by the way. <laughs> oh, no, no, not at all. Uh, but, uh... Yeah, what's that? <laughs> oh, they sell kite shields. Oh, yeah. definitely Lloyd. <laughs> you want him to make his own now? Or what, what Joy, I just, Lloyd, I've made up a basket for you, and I think you'd be interested. <laughs> yeah, I'm wondering what the, the jump bags are that I saw on the previous page. Jump These are bags. awesome. Ooh. Where, where are these ones? Oh, jump bags. Jump bags. Interesting. Oh, just big orc jump packs. Oh, that's cool. For stone boys. <laughs> I can yeah, big it. rocket packs. They're awesome. yeah. yeah, I I like that because it gives you a bit more variation to your orcs. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Very nice. I'd like to paint those with firework. Um, oh yeah. Sand. I love the one on the right. It's literally just a cherry can with yes. two rockets on it. That's fabulous. <laughs> <laughs> this will work oh it'd be great if you could literally genius. do this as that. scrap cans you know scrap old food cans just plastered yeah. together well, paint it like a Campbell's soup mm -hmm. I was hearing I was hearing a bit more about orcs and stuff in some videos I was watching this week and they were saying you know there's a whole thing of like orc guns don't actually work they will them to work hmm. and the stories of imperial guardsmen picking up orc guns and trying to fire them <laughs> And then just falling apart in their hands. <laughs> and I was like, that's great. Or yeah. just make things work through psychic energy. It's really cool. But uh, yeah, yeah, there's some 
the, the, the main focus is very much sisters uh, in this, but there's loads of other yeah. bits and pieces in there. I, if you have fun I with. think that's what you said. It's it's the stuff they want to do yeah. for yeah. themselves. And then it's, well, I've gone to all the hassle of having sculpted this. Um, so now I can pass that saving on to you. Yeah. The, the head conversions are lovely if you want a oh, bit more variation in your, your sisters yeah. of battle, because they all normally have like that little bob cut. <laughs> so a nice bit of variation. Yeah, you're right. Always good. More gas mask. Yeah. <laughs> Fascinating yeah. stuff. So there we have it. Mm -hmm. Trolls. Not under a bridge or in not a garage. In a garage. <laughs> just lurking out there. Yeah. It's the just lurking trolls. trolls. Just yeah. just lurking trolls with a, a whole host of things for pretty much every gamer. Um whatever you fancy playing skill wise or genre. They've got a bit of everything and definitely worth having a wee look-see, uh, seeing what you can turf up um, and also what I can make Lloyd buy. That's, that's key. I saw four <laughs> items in the cart, Jerry. So. <laughs> yeah, make, make him buy, make him cry. <laughs> right, folks, we're going to take a quick switch. When we come back, we'll be jumping into the news. Coming to you from the centre of Northwestern Europe, Covering board games, war games, card games, and all that sh you love. It's the Muck News. <laughs> all right, we're back with the news, and we're going to kick things off with a bit of a Celtic feel. Because uh, Warlord Games have announced their new 2008 license, Slonya. Mm. Or Slain to everybody else. Because <laughs> I know people will comment. I call it Slain. It's, it's yeah. not pronounced Slain, because uh, I see it all the time. Um, Slonya. Grania likes Slancha. Exactly. <laughs> well, it's kind of, kind of like my Aunt Grania. Yes. Uh, yeah. Uh, fascinating stuff. I'm a fan. Oh. I thought you might be. Oh. This also looks like it might tickle Warren's fancy as well. So. I did tell him about it whenever, um, yeah. whenever Charlie let me know they were doing it last year. Uh, so they're going up on pre-order. For people who are unaware, uh, Pat Mills... Almost 40 years, 40 years ago next year, I think. It was like, I think it was 83. Pat Mills wrote um, the first uh, prog of Slain for 2000 AD, uh, which is uh, a delightful fellow called Slain McRoth. Um, in the best way I find to describe it to people, because obviously everybody's fans of Kabbalah, they were Aaron, the, the Irish Book of Invasions. Everybody, it goes without saying, everybody is. Everybody, yes. Everybody. Yeah. Uh, so if you take the stories from that, so the Tuatha de Danon, the Fomorians, the multiple gods and aliens and all sorts invading Ireland constantly over time, and then you take Cúhulán and then mix him with Conan and put him <laughs> in the middle of that, that's that's what happens. Also, sometimes there's some time travel and uh, they're slain after he was kicked out. Uh for um, issues with the king and his dwarven friend Yuko, who is the most foul mouthed oh, fella ever. Yuko's Yuko's excellent. The, scratching his, his bottom, yeah. But he's great. <laughs> yeah, he will occasionally accompany uh, Slain on his travels, whether he wants to or not, uh, <laughs> as as they make their way merrily through Ireland and you know, abroad. Um, but it, it's very mythical fantasy. Slain will occasionally warp out with the the Raestrid. Um, which oh, is awesome. something yeah. very Irish. Uh, Cahillan suffered from that as well. Uh, and it's interesting because it uses a similar set of mechanics to, um, to Judge Dread and, Judge Dredd and Strong Strong Dog. Dog. Yeah. So the core mechanics are the same, in which case they're, they'll probably be using the D6 that have the, the 2008 D logo. When you roll I a double special... Yes, they're in the set, yeah. The double special triggers the warp spasm and you replace Slain with his warp spasm version. Now, Slain in the comics can pull a tree up with his bare hands when he's not rocking the spasm. <laughs> cool. When he does, he goes a bit uh, totally bananas. Um, so the, the sculpt for that kind of reminds me of, uh, oh, there's no cartoon, Freakazoid, if you remember it. No, I don't. Oh, okay. It, it sounds interesting, though. Um, kiss my axe. Kiss my His axe is called <laughs> yeah. uh, Brainbiter. It's a delightful axe. I also, he's a very tusky, boar headed, 
belt like a WWF wrestler, um, which <laughs> on occasions has been used to, to yeah. people. This is what got me into it, though. That specifically, that it was Simon Bisley started doing the artwork. Such for, an awesome um, piece of art for, yeah. for Pat. So he strolls across the world to Tier Nanook, um, lamping people when they get in his way. Mine who uh, needs and, armor, right? And uh, became the first, the first High King of Ireland. Eventually, handing it on to Gael, the father of the Gaelic people. Uh, when he decided he didn't want to do that anymore, but <laughs> I'm bored with this being a king business. No, I'm just going back yeah, on the road, his, getting his the wife, band back together. His wife got murdered and is oh. is somehow kidnapped. Oh. So yeah, spoilers oh. for Slain, by the way. If you're going to read it, although if you are going to read it, go for it. It's amazing, and it shows what they could potentially do with this because mm. obviously it's a larger than life heroic fantasy. Mm. But it contains uh, all sorts of things. So you've got the the um, weird slough egg uh, and the drones, and but you've also got massive mythical creatures. You've also got a, an almost Grendel Beowulfy type thing uh, ah, with, with okay. a monster that cuts somebody's well, he bites people's hands off. Um, <laughs> which is no, Noada Silverhand is 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 also makes an appearance um, Question, because of that. One guy just running around in his undies. <gasps> a guy on the left. This one, yeah, for reasons. His, his legs move fast enough that he doesn't need armor. Clearly, that's the because <laughs> that's that's how he was portrayed in the comics. The, how, the weapons the, are the great. Are yeah, they're, they're huge. Fabulous. They're very over the top. All of it yeah. is very over the top uh, in every way, shape, and form. Um, so it, it's great to see. Uh, I, I could have sworn I seen a cauldron somewhere. Uh, which would be nice because that there is the the that Celtic myth of the the cauldron that can rejuvenate dead warriors, and so at one point they're just throwing the dead in there uh, and having to you know deal with them as they zombie up and come back in again. I think it might have been in some of the artwork that came out yeah. in, over on the community site. I think. But, ah, well, that that might yeah. be where I've spotted it then. Yeah. Balor of the Evil Eye, scumbag, <laughs> scumbag, but useful I, mount though. Oh, it's a stunning stag. I mean, obviously, it's it's not as good as Pulk, uh, the occasionally flying giant monster that uh, Slain has in his stables, along with the dragon, actually two dragons and a horse, depending on the storyline. Yeah. One of the things I noticed is that when you look at the um, the start set, mm -hmm. it has all the, the resin figures. And then you're yes. talking about larger monsters things. There's like a cutout, like a cardboard cutout of something big in the back right of the image. And I'm like, maybe they're using that as like a placeholder at the moment or something. Oh, yeah. Ooh, and then yeah. they'll replace it with one of the bigger creatures like they've done for the likes of Mythic Americas or something in the future. Mm. That would make sense. Yeah. That would be good. Yeah. Uh, so uh, say so it uses the, the same mechanics as Dread. So it's essentially dice from the bag, although in this case it's chits from the bag. So those uh, green and gold sprues. <laughs> green, green and gold. Hard. I love the <laughs> nice. Dread with the um, epic beard. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, it's like cousinette. But you, you pull a you pull a chip from a bag to activate. Uh, you can do generally one action from a a, a myriad in the game, uh, and then have to deal with with uh, various things like pins, stuns, that sort of thing. So it'll be fascinating to see how this translates because it works very well for Dread and for Strontium Dog mm -hmm. as a skirmishy game. Yeah. Uh, I think that probably fills the narrative better for Slain as well, where you're not having to worry about massed battles. It's, you know, it, it, a, a mass battle at that period would be 30 people. You know, you're not dealing with thousands. So having that sort of wandering hero with his band of friends, of yeah. mentors. I'm interested to see how, how people approach playing this, because obviously, I would, similar to mm. Judge Dredd and Strontium Dog, I would imagine you could either play it as, you know, one person taking on the role of Slain and his mm. companions and the other person playing all the villains. Or you could play it with, because I know they've done hero sets and like warrior sets. I think yep. they've got warband sets for these. So you could, I assume you can also play it the other way as well, which would be pretty cool. So you just have like a gang leader effectively. You can and, play, yeah. um, you can play Dread with multiple players at the same time because it's, right, it's the yeah. random draw. Um, so it doesn't even have to be limited to, obviously it will, it will it will be cast for two players. Yeah, they did say play two plus in yeah. this. Yeah, so, yeah. Uh, also, so you just need another colour of chit. Little paper yeah. piece of terrain, are they? They're, 
those look like the Sarissa wooden ones. I wouldn't yeah, replace the thatch. Yeah, yeah. I'd replace yeah. the thatch with towel. I'm just saying. Don't you use mini bear fur? Yeah. Oh, you use teddy bear fur. The the miniatures are war, the warlord resin, by the way, as mm. well. So mm. it'll be the stuff they've been using for um, a lot more of their character based stuff recently. Mm. Was that what the, did they end up using that for the judge dread stuff as well? Used it for dread. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. great. Because yeah. I've got Love that dread light. sitting over there behind me somewhere. Um, I really like. I, I was really tempted by the start set. Actually, it's now sold out. But I was, <laughs> I was looking at it. I was like, well, that'd be quite nice oh, to paint. Lovely minis. But, yeah. I was thinking suspicion the special edition mini whenever it came out wasn't. I think it was metal, but the rest were the rest were resin. So it's it's um, CO cast for all intents and purposes. Yes, the CO cast uh, resin. I mean, so it's it, a bit it, softer. Um, it sounds but, like an interesting system that I do want to give a try sometime. Yeah, yeah. But you can see what they've done for Dread and what they've done for. Strontium Dog, Johnny Alpha mm. and Friends, where you can just go through and essentially follow almost the narrative flow. I mean, <laughs> there are, I don't know how many books for Slain these days. Um, I assume it's all collected into the graphic novels at this point. I would imagine. Yeah, but, it, but even then you're talking, I, I want to say there's like 22 books that size. Wow. <laughs> you know, it, it has been going for yeah. nigh on 40 years from Pat wow. um, with a, a whole host of artists. Uh, the art for it's amazing as well. So no, it's all good. Nearly family fun. Limitless potential <laughs> for pulling characters out. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Time travel is always an option with Slain. You know, don't, don't let the fact that you're stuck in the past hold you to this uh, plane or dimension. Slain <laughs> versus Judge Dredd elsewhere. coming soon. <laughs> it happened before. <laughs> all right. It'll happen, I mean, I was, it'll I was happen again. <laughs> The one yes, thing that I, I one of the things that I quite liked about this is that when I was looking through the sculpts and all these, hmm. when the initial range of Judge Dread stuff came out, I wasn't overly impressed with them. I think it was because they've come from another company, hadn't they? Um, yeah. And they were the older sculpts. They, they were but the longest of sculpts. Yeah. But now I think you see a whole new style of sculpting with from the Warlord team there. And obviously they've carried that over into Strontium Dog and, and Slade as well. The, so. All of the old originals were all metal, if I remember. Right. Yeah, I remember yeah. I brought uh, bought uh, a female judge one time when I was at a con and it right. The casting on it actually had like a crack through the waist somehow. Oh, right. yeah. That's just very a bad weird. Cast then. But look, yeah, look, look at these. Though. Yeah, look, these, these are fabulous. amazing. Yeah. They're gorgeous, aren't they? In some respects, it reminds me of um, Reaper Bones. The first time, <laughs> the, the yeah. first Reaper Bones, they took their old sculpts and then cast them, but they'd never been sculpted with a view to being cast in a soft um, plastic. Yeah. And so they suffered. God, did they suffer. But by the time they've hit, what are they up to now? Reaper Bone 17 or something? Um, Four billion. <laughs> they, they know the material they're sculpting for. Likewise with yeah. this, um, with moving over to the, the resin. Yeah. They know the... I love those guys. There's a lot of patience in that yeah. picture with all the tartan and the uh, the uh, markings. Oh, yeah. Well, yeah. There's also some, some cunningly hidden uh, genitalia as well. Yeah, oh, they, they, yeah. They, they, they at least have the decency to cover the dangly bits. <laughs> No, no clippers needed, Justin. <laughs> Yay! Yeah, right. I quite like the, no, no, I quite, sorry, it should be R. Oh. I quite like the droon as well. I thought the droon have got this amazing look to them. Oh yeah! I mean, the yeah. detail in the shoes. Oh yeah, yeah, is fabulous. Utter oh, filth. I can see why you like the droon. They are I assume menacing. scum and villainy, Jerry. <laughs> well, you know, they're not great. Depending on how Pat is feeling. It's either a stand-in for the Tory party or it's a stand-in for the Catholic Church, and that changes week <laughs> by week. Uh, so, so, yeah, the, the Druner uh, are not nice people. Uh, the days of Sappho. Yeah. Yep. Well, it's for, nice to uh, see somebody still doing it. Who's but, this guy with the clopesh? Not uh, clopesh, but yeah, almost that, clopesh. That, that's sickle. That's slow yeah. fag. The, cool. the weird lord. Uh, who looking? Who, who's the creepy little dude in back? One, another one of the dwarves. I, I can't remember his name. Yeah, he is it's in dwarf. the. I, I, they wrote. They wrote down his name. I'll find it for you. Mm. Uh, uh, Robin the dwarf. Robin. So, yeah. 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 Very unique. Uh, and for kids playing at home, that is not pronounced Mab or Meb. That's Mave. 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 Oh, just say. Welcome to Irish name spelling. Yeah, I knew there was an. I knew there was another version of spelling Mave, but I assume that was the original version of that. Was it? Or was yeah. It, yeah, <laughs> it's it's just one that comes up an awful lot. I, especially when people are talking about slain and they get into it, and, and you get Nam, and you go, "No, that's Neve." <laughs> Nam and Meb, 
I'm just going to call her Medem. Medem. <laughs> Medem. Medem. Yeah. Medem. Yeah. <laughs> Stunning oh, looking no. set, and I'm, I'm really looking forward to. Yeah. I'm really looking forward to get my hands on it. I told, like I said, mm. I told Warren when it was coming. I was like, we we need this. And yes. then told Charlie from Warlord, <laughs> I need this, Charlie. And Charlie's gone very quiet, probably because he knows I need it. Yes, yes. I will get uh, it. It will I, be I, mine, Charlie. I, I will. I will second that. I do remember you telling Warren and Warren being this. This is me. This is this is a story based on my life. So uh, is he basically naked? Yeah. Does he have an axe? I will play. <laughs> Does he once in a while just go off down the rabbit hole and you don't know what's happening, and then all of a sudden things are back to normal, and yeah, there's just death and destruction behind you. Sure, yeah. checks out. <laughs> it's a way to do it. Anyway, so yep, keep your eye out for more coming for Slain from uh, Warlord Games in the future. <laughs> We're moving away from the Weird Lord and then just into Weird Miniatures. Free. Oh. Well, we are going from the lovely rural brutality in the clutches of Slanya, Slanya, or Slang if you want to say it phonetically, in Ireland and through the breach. Um, and we're games and looking at their new releases coming this month. So they're continuing strong from the releases this month for both Malafo and the other side. There's some new units, new masters to add to the tabletop, and some Malafo themed puzzles as well to keep you in theme and not straying too far from the breach. So starting this month with Malafo. You've got two different boxes sitting on your pre-order. Uh, we're focusing releases on keywords now, so not factions. Uh, so you've got the Monstrous Box first. Uh, that's got a mix of Neverborn and Resurrectionist models. So there you go. Um, you'll find Molly Squidpidge, the Chaotic Conductor, Nakima. Molly Mother, Squidpidge. Squidpidge. <laughs> that is an looks- amazing name. Uh, and 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 dead near flame in the box. So there'll be mm-hmm. some new promoted masters uh, to create uh, to, cool. to crew control your new band misfits. So the second Malafoe release uh, is titled uh, "They All Fall Down." You've got Dashwell Barker, the Butcher, Hamlin, the Piper, and a disease containment unit. So these are a combination of outcasts and guild. So putting the likes of Dashiell Barker in the master seat in this box and oh, that's cool. butcher yeah. brutality with him. Mm. So sticking with Malafoe, uh, if you do enjoy a cheeky puzzle to calm your nerves. Uh, you do we do like puzzles. I really <laughs> like puzzles, Ben. I'm a puzzle here. They're releasing two different thousand piece puzzles. Theme with Malafoe characters. So you've got your Titania one there. Um, from the Neverborn and you have the masterpiece in your other one so you've got two puzzles coming in how many pieces are they how many pieces? a thousand a thousand oh i i made i made the grave mistake of buying my girlfriend a puzzle for christmas it then obviously had to be finished mm. and so it took up the entire of the coffee table i could put nothing else on it until it was done <laughs> yeah that's the thing i got one of those special puzzle mats that you can roll up because uh, i did the same big, thing then big brain energy <laughs> <laughs> did you know that they tend to use the same dies to they cut, do yeah, yeah which means you can swap pieces mm-hmm. so if you find some really weird um, thing you can you know you can end up putting the Neverborn's head on the front of that massive creature that the blokes yeah. working on <laughs> things like yeah. that. That's quite good. Uh, the other side as well have uh, we're going on the other side with the other side. Um, I was speaking about these two before earlier along last year, but you'll be happy to know that they're going to be making their way into retail and onto the tabletop for mass market now. So you've got both Samantha Thrace and Bing Union. I might be saying that wrong. I could be. There's an N and a G. And a year all together um, and they're going to retail at the end of this month so there's brand new sculpts and a look uh, a new look for the game really so a few players are going to already have their hands on these they were pre-released I'm pretty sure mm. at Gen Con last year these have actually been released before I think they were a part of a the other side Kickstarter all mm. back when it began so this is a complete new sculpt new relook at it but now's your chance if you do play the other side to get your hands on these two at retail um, with their new retail. Yeah. So, yeah, Sweet. they usually do release their uh, products at the end of the month. So if you do want to bolster up on your Malifaux figures or the other side or just literally want to sit down with a grim puzzle, 
the calms your nerves. Uh, there's, uh, you won't be disappointed at the end of the Sticking moment. together, Malifo figures is a grim puzzle as well. Oh, it really is. <laughs> Tiny pieces. I have to glue his face onto his face? What? <laughs> what do you mean I have to glue each individual finger onto this uh, tiny hand? <laughs> they do, they have, although Malifo... They have changed things now. They, have, they yeah. do release some pre-constructed models. They do, now, yeah. Like, yeah. Yeah, yeah so, the yeah. new uh, starter sets are all going to be pre-assembled. pre-assembled. Mm-hmm. So, we do I want to have a look at third edition because I've, yeah, I've yeah. always been on the outside looking in, uh, so I've, I've no idea game wise. The card based mechanic like is dog. amazing. Yes, it's such a good yeah. way of like pushing your luck and stuff. Yeah, it's really cool. It. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Also, there's a McCabe in it, so there is a McCabe. Uh, I've got my old Sonia gone. Krieg model. Why would I not play that? <laughs> I bet McCabe's a lovely person as well in the game. <laughs> All McCabe's sure. are. Well, yeah, by, by law, I suppose. Yeah. That makes <laughs> sense. After Christmas, I now have a goblin gang if anyone ever wants a game. There you go. Mm-hmm. Well, I've got, a ton of, I've got a ton of Neverborn sitting out on my table since before they changed the rules and before they Malibu Burns come in. So if anybody does want a game, I'm happy to actually get them on the table. Our contestants have been arranged. <laughs> <laughs> right, before we get any further into booking our copy time, uh, Ben, <laughs> tell me about Libertalia. Yes, so Libertalia is a game that uh, came out way back in the, the old days, in the classic in the classic days of 2012, uh, when we were all but we children, uh, well, most of us. And <laughs> so this came out uh, back in 2012, and it was amazing. It was a fantastic game by Paolo Mori. Really good fun to dive into. You had kind of uh, distinct uh, pirate crews. You chose a set of them from a deck of cards, and then you played out each day of a voyage, trying to get as much loot as you could before the other people. And the way that you did that is you played cards into that sort of island that you see there in the centre of the board, and then you'd go up based on the uh, value in the top left corner, and you'd resolve everything in line. So you had to kind of second guess what everyone else was doing at the table in order to try and win the most loot. Mm. As I say, this came out in 2012, and then it effectively vanished (laughs) from the face of the earth. Of my copy. I didn't! That's why I've never played it. <laughs> exactly, yeah. This is, this is the thing. The original game goes for, well, went at least, for so much money on eBay and all that kind of thing because nobody could buy it for love nor money. And now Stone My Games are coming back uh, alongside Power and Mori once more to create a new version, a new edition of the game. Uh, the initial Libertalia, as you might have known by the name of it, uh, was very piratical um, themed. It had lots of sort of very classic pirate art on it with plenty of nods to famous <laughs> uh, famous people throughout its artwork. There were plenty of sort of Pirates of the Caribbean references in there and everything. So uh, you could definitely get your, uh, your money's worth out of all the different pop culture stuff. They've changed things over in this new edition uh, with the new art by Lamaro Smith, which you can see here, which takes it from just being a sort of seaborne piratical adventure into something a little bit more fantastical which is why it's now got the subtitle of the winds of gale crest mm-hmm. so you're now sky pirates Yar. <laughs> um uh instead of the base crew uh i think it was between sort of like 20 and 30 you normally had that's now been extended to 40 characters that you get to choose from when we're making a crew which is pretty cool they've put in a new way for you to resolve ties so it's not just based on a little element based it baked to the cards uh, they've also put in a solo mode if you want to play against the game's AI, which is pretty awesome. And they've also reworked a lot of the components, as you can see. Nice. Um, you can see some of them in the video, actually, from when we played the game originally. But it used to be all sort of cardboard chits and all that kind of mm-hmm. thing. They've updated everything. So you've got these really nice little tiny Starburst-esque um, or opal fruits, depending on who you are, <laughs> <laughs> based sweetie-like um, tokens now. Uh, alongside. Oh, I remember this edit. Oh, God. Uh, I'm having to <laughs> No, because I had to digitally recreate every element of that to show what was happening on the board. Wow. The PTSD is coming back. To oh, Justin, my God. Yeah. Although, one of the, the most interesting things about this game was the fact that everybody essentially started with the same crew. Yes. And yeah. as you played through, it was what you held back mm-hmm. towards the end of the game gave you that difference to actually have different tactics left over to play yeah. at the end of the game to really swing it in your favor, which I found really interesting. Yeah, it's really good because, yeah, as you're saying, like everyone has the same 
pitch to work with. It's just about when, 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 and how you employ that. That's the mm-hmm. big thing there, yeah. which I think is really cool. Exactly, and that's how yeah. it plays into the end of the game. Yeah. Basically, I might have like a potion at the end of the game where you played it super early, mm-hmm. you know, and then I've got that, and his ability would just knock you out in the final round. Yeah. I mean, I'm I'm a massive fan of Stonemaier games anyway. I mean, I don't ever think everybody loves Wingspan anyway, but I love Tapestry and I, uh, what other ones have I played? If Tapestry, have you played Scythe as well? Scythe, I love. What's the wine one? That oh, oh that's very um, good. Viticulture, I love Viticulture, that. that's fantastic. So this is one that's really missed me because, as you said, it's been impossible to get hold of. So I'm quite excited to actually get a chance to finally play it. Well, so, yeah. I'm it's hopefully going to be out uh, later on this year, so uh, watch out for that. Um, I might bring my copy of across the UK Games Expo, get a game of the evening free. Do it, please do. That'd be the original is still fantastic. Uh, it's just I, I have no idea why it vanished into the ether, but there we go. <laughs> so, what's the player count? Uh, so it's two to four. Sorry, one to four now, obviously, because you've oh, uh, they've added the in mode. the solo yeah. mode, but it was uh, originally two to four, I think. So. Uh, no, I think there was up to six players. Oh, did they turn? Oh, okay. Well, well the, the copy I have has yeah. up to six, I believe. Let me check. It'll say on the box. <laughs> it is now one to it is the it is one to six. You are correct. That's fab. You are correct. It's because I've only ever played it with four. That's why. <laughs> yeah. It does well, get your friend a little hack caps out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, you see, when you're playing with more players, you're only putting out so much treasure in each. Yeah, yeah. You know, location. Mm-hmm. So somebody's going home with nothing. Someone's going home with curses. Someone's going home with gems. Someone's going to get killed. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> yep. You know, oh, the, yeah. the cabin boy, he might turn up. Mm-hmm. Roger. Yeah. Yep. Uh, so, yeah, they've done some fantastic stuff, I think, with this one and sort of updating it for a new edition of the game. Uh, I think it'd be really awesome to see it back on the table. As I say, great fun when it originally came out. Still great fun to play now. Uh, they don't seem to have messed with the mechanics too much. It just seems to be a tightening of it all. So, you know, why mess with the classic? There say. You go. Yeah. So, mm. go. so if you've messed out on that one in the past, then keep your eye out for Libertalia Winds of the Gale Crest when it comes out. And from a classic game to classic civilizations free. Mm-hmm. So as we have announced their release of upcoming civilization games from Sandcastle Games that's coming in March. So this takes players as leaders of ancient civilizations and you hope to control and dominate the world around you by flexing some unique abilities. So two to five players are going to be taking the role of a particular civilization leader that belongs to an ancient race. So across the map, players are going to fight for dominance over where the land is. By doing this, players have got to send out their meeples, utilise their dice to progress in strength by upgrading their player board in front of them. So, as you can see, the map itself, you can find on the main board, is massive. So there's plenty to journey and plenty to discover, but players can meet new civilizations and tap into their varied abilities, allowing progression into new areas and to become bespoke for the player. So it's going to take a lot of strategy if players are using their civilization correctly. So they're going to have this board in front of them um, to be focused on. This is your main focus. And this is where the magic happens. This is where players develop mm-hmm. their civilizations with the help of the dice. So the number on the dice represents one of the five abilities that they've got. So as the game goes on, they can develop their boards, develop their abilities, and add particular effects to the game, such as more dice or additional rerolls helping you out and helping you go further. So the game's played out of six different rounds. So players can be determined the winner, whoever's racked in the most points. So points can be earned in loads of different ways, such as completing achievement cards, goals, and obviously earning from invading. So myself, when I go for civilization games, I'm quite a peaceful person. I tend to, though, say that... You're going turtle in the corner, is that Oh, right? no. I team <laughs> up with the main aggressor on the table oh, every okay. time because I rack in the riches. And I'm like, you need me. Don't kill me. Don't. <laughs> so that's what I always do on the table. So it's oh. quite interesting to see that each individual civilization is truly unique and that you can grow the abilities. Depend. It's a nice replayability as well because one time you might turn around and say, oh, I want to play this particular civilization this time. But... <clears throat> If you've got a full table, the game's going to take roughly about an hour to get through. So it's, it's rated at age 14 as well. So it's a great way in a lightweight civilizations game to get them into it. Um, it seems quite straightforward to pick up, considering that you've got to focus on your player board um, and, not, and diverse your own strategy, really. What, 
One of the things that I think really worked for me when I was reading about this was the idea that it's it's light, as you say. It's got that very mm-hmm. short place yeah. playtime because there are so many civilization games out there that take oh yeah hours to play <laughs> in the actual civilization. <laughs> uh, but I think this one actually works really nicely. Uh, mm-hmm. I think it'll be really fun to dive in and give it a go. I also like that they've gone for like, I think the artwork in this is amazing. Oh, it's gorgeous. I was just looking through it all again. And I really like that they've taken the idea of just sort of approaching things from a different perspective when it comes to the different yeah. cultures there. Because so many times you see these kind of things, it's like, and you can play the Vikings. Yes. And you're like, well, okay. Play the Vikings cool. and the Egyptians <laughs> and the Romans. Then. Yeah. <laughs> and whereas this time they've gone, they've gone East, which I think is really awesome. So mm-hmm. it'll be really fun to see how this works and sort of how it plays out. I, I am all aboard for this. Yeah. And it looks like it's coming straight to retail as well. It does look like it's coming straight to retail in March. I think, mm-hmm. Justin, I bet you're a nightmare with civilization games. I bet you're a proper warmonger. Are you? <laughs> <laughs> yes. We'll take that as a yes then. Yeah. Well, you, you know, I, I kind of do it like the, the British yesterday. You know, they would seal up and go, Would you like to trade with us? No. Okay. A few months later, they come back with the Navy with all the guns and go, Would you like to trade with us? Yes. Just Nothing more needs to be said. What an evil <laughs> man! <laughs> evil. That, that, that's 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 just economics. <laughs> Economic <laughs> economics by the edge of the sword. <laughs> you know, uh, aggressive negotiations may ensue. Exactly. Yeah. yeah very cool. <laughs> um, we're next going to be moving over, over to uh, another board game. Um, so this was one that was teased by some of the folks at Mythic Games. Uh, over the last couple of days, although I believe there has been whispers of this for a few months at least. Uh, But Mythic Games are going to be bringing another board game to Kickstarter this year called Anastia. So Anastia, and this is where my mind went, hold on a cotton-picking minute. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, This used to, and weirdly again, be a range from back in 2012, same as when we were talking about Libertalia, that was designed by Dust Studios. Uh, It was a 32 millimeter miniatures range, which we'll see some images of later. But uh, Mythic Games are going to be bringing this back to the tabletop. They've sort of picked up the license and going to be bringing us a epic campaign-based adventure, fantasy adventure uh, to play out with some epic heroes and some even more epic monsters, as you might have imagined. That troll, he, he yep. is a chunky boy. Yeah, considering the normal humans are 32, oh. that guy is a big. <laughs> he doing him a chunk. Yeah. Um, so you'll notice there's been some artwork in there. For, so the cover was done by Wayne Reynolds, who a lot of people will know from Pathfinder art. And then he's got a lot of other concept art that's been shown off as well for a bunch of the other characters too. Um, uh, a lot of the similar sort of characters from the 2012 release seem to have carried over as well, which is quite nice. Uh, so we've got the likes of, and I'm just going to read the names up here, Conrad, the Master of Blades, Undraw, the Queen of the North, and Skull, the Protector. They're all there just r- sort of... Um, brought back to the tabletop in a new style and a new way. The thing that I really liked about the artwork in particular is it kind of gets across that um, sort of Conan-esque feel to things Mm. where things are similar and yet in a sort of uncanny way, larger than life. So you have things like that massive, huge sort of copse of trees there that sort of extends into some something fantastical and magical. You've got that huge tomb or catacomb, maybe a temple set into the, the cliffs of an ancient... Uh, well, mountain that range or there yeah. is giant. Yes, according and to Leo. these what? little dots below <laughs> no! them are humans. No way. Sense of skill there for you. Wow. Human, giant, bigger door. Giant the giant house. size stairs. <laughs> yep. Wow. Giant size stairs, giant size stairs. So this definitely is going to be a large scale game then in that regard. Mm. Well, in terms of scope anyway. So, uh, I mean, nice. knowing Mythic, they're going to go cuckoo bananas with the miniatures. <laughs> gorgeous stuff and more than likely having way too much in the box. Yeah. So just as a reminder, these are not the miniatures we're going to be getting. Mm. These no, are the, the old originals. old um, uh, Dust Studios versions from 2012. <laughs> uh, that I Because I was like, I'm, I'm fairly sure we talked about this game. Yes, we did. I wrote the article. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, PTSD. It's, yeah. But it's, uh, <laughs> it's definitely one of those games where you've got, you know, big, huge weapons, Fur clad warriors, oh, rippling muscles, oh, tattoos, yes. everything you want. Yeah, there's some really awesome stuff in there. There's also a, a hint of a like, um, 
confrontation in some of the designs as well. Which Isn't there though, especially yeah. with that on the shoulder Those pads? Shield, yeah. Yeah. That's that's like a Final Fantasy weapon, that is. <laughs> <laughs> it, it's huge. It's the Buster Sword. <laughs> yes. I mean, it's, it's all the oversized weapons and not a one of them looks as if it would be properly balanced. <laughs> exactly, yeah. It's like, you left it out and you're like, Donk. Balance is overrated. <laughs> uh, but yeah, there's some really interesting stuff coming up for this, I think. Uh, as is the case with a lot of stuff from Mythic, I'm sure we're going to be getting a lot of uh, previews in the run-up to the Kickstarter launch later this year. You can see the two characters there that we saw before on the left and right, sort of in their new Wayne Reynolds style. Uh, but we've also, they're going to be doing this for two to four, well, one to four players. Um, so you can either play it, as I said, as a larger campaign, or they've also said they're going to do it so that you can play one-off quests, a little bit like the Conan board game from Monolith. Mm-hmm. So you can dive in and just play that, and that's your session done. You don't have to worry. And I think that's a pretty good thing to add into these kind of games because there's so many times where people start campaigns and never end up finishing them. Gloomhaven, for example, all that kind of thing. So having something like this, which you can dive into, play, have fun with, and then rock onto something else, I think is really cool. And obviously, there's the solo element in there as well. So yeah, I think right. we're we're going to have to track down a wild Leonidas and just you know pin him down on camera. I'm sure get we will. Some uh, <laughs> extra info for everyone. Yeah. <laughs> the way to do that is you just roll a lot of hair product <laughs> out into the road, and when he scampers out to get it, you throw a net on him. <laughs> Sounds like you're talking for experience there, Jerry. It really is. Uh, <laughs> it works. <laughs> Jerry has no people hunting. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, but yeah, interesting stuff from Mythic. Mm-hmm. Rounding off the news this week, it would not yeah. be the news unless we had something GW based. Is it the price rise? Oh, don't that start was, me. That don't was start a, me. That was as inevitable as the tides. Well, yeah, um, very much so. Yeah. Yeah. Kind of the way Wednesday. they tried to make it offhanded. You know, with the cost of everything else in the world going up, you know. Yeah. But not in Australia. Uh, no, there's like four <laughs> countries where they didn't do it. I think it's Australia, New Zealand, and a couple other places. Japan, to be fair, the, the antipodes have been paying over the odds for about a decade now. So yeah. They, yeah. The rest of the world has some catching up. They, to they, they, they deserve a break. Weirdly, this has nothing to do with the price rise. I just thought I'd throw that in. Yeah. Uh, uh, but yes, uh, the uh, the news that we got this week uh, was specifically for me. I think they even put, hey, Ben, look at these. Look at the <laughs> start of the article. Uh, but uh, remember those Corsair Voids guard that we talked about, which mm-hmm. uh, was, we've got one model was shown off at the LVO event. Well, yes. they decided, well, we probably should have showed off a few more. And they did. So they put together a trailer and some new preview images, and you can't hide them from me. I know how to get into the page elements and find the individual PNG files and then cut them out. Thank you very much. So, yes. <laughs> I did that, just that game's workshop. Oh, that, that guy with the red and black hair, I look at him and just every time I see him, all I hear is bangerang. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, that might be what they listen to because these are the Corsair, the Corsair Voids Guard who might listen to bangerang as they're flying around the galaxy uh, no, no, robbing no, and stealing. No, hooks bangerang! Yeah. Bangerang! Exactly. Yeah. The Wolfie. Peter Pan story oh. with Robin Williams, Ben. I am disappointed in you, sir. I, I'm just. I'm I am just... disappointed. Okay. No, I have no idea what any of that means. <gasps> Sorry, I've got you, Justin. It's fine. Uh-huh. It's all right. Uh, but anyway, so these are the Corsair Voice Guard. Uh, there's going to be a new Kill Team set coming out. Uh, this one is going to be the first of the Nakmund ones. Uh, the one before this, the, Ka- the Chalmath one, came out, and I completely forgot that it had. Uh, mm-hmm. But this is going to be the new one for the start of 2022. Uh, you're going to have the Corsair Voice Guard going up against what people assume is going to be Chaos Cultists, because they have removed the original set from the web store at the moment. Mm-hmm. So that looks like it's going to be redone. And it makes sense that they'd be raiding something, maybe some you know, chaos cultists on a barge somewhere or whatever, uh, or inside a hive or something like that. Uh, but the uh, the idea is that this is going to be one of the core set, uh, one of the kill teams, a little bit like the the veterans or the uh, the commandos, where every one of these feels like an individual warrior. There's not one of these where it's kind of based off what you already have in your army. You can kind of buy this, and it's effectively a get started for kill team. Everything will be included for you to just dive in and have fun with. There's some really awesome designs in here. I really like the mix of the sort of Eldari stuff with Drakari, and then you've also got some Exodite symbols here and there as well, I've been told, which is pretty nice. You've also got a whole mix of different weaponry in there too, so you've got people with the sort of like sniper rifles, you've got a couple of people with fusion blasters and that kind of thing. There's someone carrying a man-portable D-cannon, 
which just seems like the most terrifying thing to put in someone's face. I really like the guy with the two daggers, which actually means he's got four daggers. And he's also got a warp spider generator on his back. So he's going to be dashing around like a proper edgelord, oh. stabbing people in the back and then banishing I mean, off to the darkness. You need daggers so, for your daggers? Yeah. Exactly. Some Vaxel Dan critical role references in there. Dagger, dagger, dagger. Yo, oh, dude, I heard thing. you like daggers. So I put a dagger on your That's dagger. Like so you stab one, you stab. That's one of the Harlequin weapons. Like, so a neural it? disruptor. A neural okay. disruptor, yeah, yeah. Apparently everyone's been saying, <laughs> old school. will I buy, will I pay £200 for a new kill team set that will come with a uh, right-handed or whatever um, neural disruptor because all the other ones are left-handed or something. So that's been quite fun. But <laughs> there's some really cool stuff in there. The way that I, 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 cause I was th- looking at the paint schemes for these and I was mm. like, oh, I, I kind of like the sort of blue and, blue and green. I think that's kind of cool. I think when it comes to these, I'm going to do them pink. I'm going to do them like bright Ooh. fuchsia pink with purple cloaks and then give them like green and blue hair, like properly weird punk it up. I think it's going to be very cool. I mean, yes. if, so, if you yeah. do like a bolt gun metal and then do like a full grim pink over the top of it, Ben. That could be cool. Make it like a nice candy effect. I could do candy as well. Yeah, yeah. Just uh, have a look at the old uh, retro cyberpunk stuff. You'll get exactly. some nice colors. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Uh, because the thing is, I was like, well, I'm going to paint them and I don't really want to do them in blue because then they'll kind of look a bit weird and link alongside the iand and stuff I've got. So why not just go entirely different? Let's just yeah. make them pink. Yes. So yeah, I think that'd be quite fun. So, yeah, you so, just yeah. imagine an elder mum and dad, the, the pirate ship comes in after the kid's been gone on vacation, rocks out and she's like, son, what happened? Oh God. <laughs> He's met new friends at university. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder. Do you remember there was a, um, oh, you probably don't actually. There was a story where Prince Ariel had been a pirate. He'd been kicked was, off his, yeah. his um, craft world mm-hmm. and it got attacked by a high fleet. And then he came back. And he and, came back with yeah. his pirate fleet and kicked the living tar out of so the So it makes perfect sense for my end and start, have some yeah. corsairs. So, yeah. And they're, you know, it's not the, you're not going yellow and blue. You're having that sort of bluey thingy, yellowy. And then, you know, you can throw it out that there's similar colors in there, Good but not that. the same palette. Oh, that'd be mm. good idea. Just saying. Damn, Just saying. Jerry. There's Jerry coming in with his ideas. And then, I could buy, and then I could buy Prince Yuri and then I could have the whole shebang. But there we go. Yeah. 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 Run it all together. Yeah. You're already thinking about it, but yeah. Yeah. Well, <laughs> the thing is, well, like uh, as a lot of people sense. have said, and we talked about it in the XLBS um, on Sunday last week as well. Obviously, this is going to be a big new set that's going to come out. It's going to be a hundred and odd quid with lots of terrain and everything like that. Mm-hmm. Just as just as we said last week, you do not have to buy that immediately if you don't have the ability to do so. Just wait, because as is the case with all the stuff they've done for Kill Team so far, it will all be about l- later in separate boxes and all that kind of thing. Maybe you'll ben. even win a copy of the Kill Set, the Kill Team Set. Ben, we're, oh, yeah. we're gamers. We want it all, and we want it all right now. But you don't need it right now. Don't. But we, yeah. but we want it. We had a discussion about this, Justin. Justin you are the problem. <laughs> <laughs> shocking, shocking altogether. Yeah. Oh, yeah. There you go. If you want some pirates, proper old school pirates, none of them have a fluffy collar. Oh man, I think we need Jerry, to see I'm sure that's a Jerry can for the future. Yeah, yeah. Fluff, there's fluffy a, corsair collars. Yeah. There's a great picture of an Eldar pirate and rogue trader where he's got just this like fur collar that comes up to about the back of his head. That's and it's just this massive fabulous. Thing. Get the, the eyelashes. Of, rest of stuff's armor. Yeah, yeah. yeah. eyelashes are um or uh, flock static static flock of shoulders. Anyway, lacking a collar as it is. Uh, interesting, interesting stuff from Games Workshop. Mm-hmm. We shall round out the news there and come right back in a couple of swishes with some 3D printing. All righty then, Ben. So 3D printing, having a look at the Avatars of War. Can't get yeah. enough of Felix and his dwarves. Exactly. I, I had to go home to for more. Um, so yes, we, we have talked about Avatars of War as an indie of the week before, where we looked mm-hmm. at a lot of their um, resonant metal miniatures that can be used for the Ninth Age and a whole bunch of other different fantasy games. Uh, but uh, over the last year or so, Avatars of War and Felix have also moved into the realm of 3D printing and Patreon as well. Uh, and uh, so I thought I'd guide us through their My Mini Factory page, which has been mm-hmm. sort of growing and blossoming over the last little while. Um, this is a very hairy barbarian centric. It episode, really is. Isn't it? I think big, 
barbarian butts is the way to go this yes. <laughs> this week. <laughs> it really has been. We're just no, missing no, Boris. We have set him in. You know, mm. good for that. <laughs> really, like Conan esque figure in the top left of that one. Yeah, yeah. Yep. Well, yeah, <laughs> lots of those around. Um, Oof, yeah. devil. So this is their offerings for the month of February, which is mm-hmm. obviously all this barbarian forces and that kind of thing. I think this is a nice route for them to go to have gone down because Avatars of War um, tended to have a very, let's say, relaxed release schedule no, <laughs> about no, things. Yeah. yeah, so it was a couple of things every so often, whereas this means that whatever Felix has ended up sculpting or anyone on the team has ended up mm-hmm. sculpting will eventually just get it out, get out there in the world thanks to the fact that people can just download the STL files and have at it effectively. Yeah. Um, but yeah, all of these are, are pretty much sort of done uh, to be used in your skirmish games and that kind of thing. But a lot of this is very much based on the idea of being used in things like their um, their arena deathmatch game, which is pretty yeah. cool. But also for, as I said before, the ninth age, um, because Avatars of War tend to like work alongside the people that created yeah. that project in order to create interesting and diverse options for you to use in those games you know, in sort of like echoing what people lost with one of fantasy battles and that kind of thing too. There's no reason why you couldn't use these for other games, of course, as well. Yeah. Um, these were some of the first ones they did actually, which are the Rune yeah, Smith started, statues. Yeah. They started with terrain pieces, big. Mm-hmm. Was, I remember, you, I remember a, a, this. Expletive there, but yes, big terrain pieces. Yeah, which would be fantastic for putting outside the front of large dwarven holds um, or just like for, the, the thing that I quite like about pieces like this is that you could have a rolling hillside country theme for your mm. tabletop. You, then you stick a couple of these down covered in vines. Suddenly it's the uh, sort of frontier of a dwarven kingdom that you're now stepping into. And mm. you get that theme and narrative immediately built into the collection, which I think is really nice. Um, but yeah, it's not just dwarves. <laughs> they have been doing some other stuff. One of the nice things... Ogre. Yeah. One of the nice things they did over the last... I think it was... Last, I think it was the last six months or so, they started to do a lot of their sort of orcs and goblins and beast mm. figures. Um, so they've really gone down the route of doing some interesting and diverse looking um, warlords and stuff for you to use in your armies. They've got things like this spellcaster as well. So if you wanted to make something that fits into a particular school of magic that you wanted for the Ninth Age, you've got that option there as well, which is quite nice. You know, use him at the head of a Marienburg army, perhaps. You know, Marienburg is like he's slime surfing. Water. Yeah, yeah, it does. Or, or do him as a slime surfer. There we go. Yeah. If you can print that in two parts, if somebody does not put a surfboard underneath, I'm going to be severely disappointed. <laughs> it definitely needs to happen now. Yeah. But um, all their stuff uh, is, you know, has the same amount of detail that you would have imagined from a lot of the stuff from Avatars of War. Mm. Just obviously, it's then done. <laughs> to be done for it's been designed for 3d printing rather than for the traditional metal casting or anything like that that they used to do so uh they, they've gone into some interesting rich with a lot of these I, I i particularly like a lot of their beast fan and stuff because one of the things that's always grated on me is the fact that the games workshop minotaurs look awful they are they terrible are, they are categorically some of the worst things they've ever made if you were to get a yeah. bag full of watermelons and put it in a quarter and lean a stick against it, it would have a more realistic musculature yes. than yeah. the GW Minotaurs. I, yes. Arsh. And Jerry's not exaggerating. No, no. <laughs> no Arsh, it's, like, it's like somebody yeah. had heard of muscles but had never seen them, had never yeah. looked in the mirror or even looked down at their own body and just, just put yeah. bumps. Yeah. Bumps over bumps over bumps. Oh, that, really must, that, that must be how muscles work. How old is the sculpt? Like uh, well, four it's five, multi-part, six years old, multi-part six plastic. Years old. Yeah. So it's not like they can go, oh, we've made this long time ago. Also, prior to that, they had gorgeous Trish uh, Cardine sculpted metals, which I have a ton of, which means people there knew how to sculpt minotaurs and somebody chose not to. However, rather than get me off on a tangent. I've, I've, just, seen, toys. I've just seen the spike in between the legs. Did you see that? That's fantastic. Running that full pelt. Yeah, on all of them. Yeah. Run full pelt, get anything smaller of you. God, I mean, if you want to body check someone, you can stab them at the same exactly. time. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. So. It's also a handy place to store a snack. Oh, um, yeah. <laughs> your, your groin snack. Like on the run. Unscrew it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's uh, nice because they yeah. made him as a physical model years ago, standing on foot. <laughs> but mm-hmm. now you can have a, a mounted version if yeah. you want your war- warlord. The creatures are beautiful. They are. I really yeah. love them. It's, I think it's one of the things I think Felix and the team do really well. Is the sort of like beards? <laughs> no, he's killed Ben. <laughs> uh, 
I, I, I love their sort of larger than life creatures. I think they do a really good job on these. And because they then don't have to worry about the, the process of then getting Casting. that cash, yeah. they can be like, look how amazing this is. Now you deal with the, <laughs> the printing. <laughs> I'm dead. Take over. Yeah. Who couldn't want one of those in their army if you wanted to theme it around the idea of Nurgle? I think that's a really cool idea. Mm-hmm. Have that at the head of an army of pestigors and, and away you go, basically. So get some swirls, um, make it saw. <laughs> yes, so that too. Mm-hmm. But they'd be more likely to be corneate if they were squirrels. Mm-hmm. That's that interesting, happens. the fact that they're doing multi part units. Mm-hmm. That's cool. Make yeah. Branches. You could build your skeleton army then. Yeah. <laughs> well, they would build those in 3D rather than printing them. Yeah. So one one of the one of the nice, neat things about this is they've done the Beastman skeletons you mm. see there. They've also done orc skeletons in the mm. past. Nice. So if you wanted to make a like a cursed company <sighs> regiment or something from the old sort of mercenaries dogs of war thing, Richter Kruger, then you could definitely do that and have like because one of the whole things with that was that when you hit people with the sword, they turn into undead followers for his mm. army. So you could have these for all the beast men and stuff that he's mm. killed and things would be really awesome. So See, that, so, yeah. that modular is really nice because it means yes. you can do so yeah. many different things with it to just mm-hmm. keep everybody looking pretty individual. Yeah. I like it. Yeah. But um, yeah, it's, it's definitely a range that very similar to, uh, and again, that's an update on one of their older schools yeah. they've done as well, actually. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Carrying a dwarven axe mm. with the filth. Um, <laughs> uh, In a quiet. Very, very Grom the paunch. Mm. So, yeah, which is pretty cool. That's why I bought mine. <laughs> this is Grom. Yeah. Although Grom came in a chariot, so you'd need oh, this as well. That is true. Oh, I do yeah. like this. That's amazing. Yeah. Although it's, it's almost like rackish wolves. Yeah. They are quite. <laughs> I rackish. mean, go- goblins are very small, so yeah. you know, a little bit of height helps them. I love how that doesn't look still. If that makes sense. Yeah. It looks yeah. like it's yeah, moving it's with the whip, with them running. Yeah. It's not mm-hmm. stuck. Yeah. It's always an issue when it comes to sort of like cavalry based things or anything like that. Is that it sometimes looks like they're just like on parade or Part. cantering around. Yeah. <laughs> uh, whereas with these, you've obviously got, uh, as you say, that see. sense of motion, which is nice. So, I mean, the, the one thing I might do to that is, you see the, the crow's nest, just heat up the, the actual peg up for it and just bend it back a little bit. So as if it's gone forward and he's just like whipping back. <laughs> <laughs> and then when it poor, stops, poor he gets girl. flung forward. <laughs> yeah. ah! That's how it works. That's that does. That sounds like something that will be uh, built by goblins. <laughs> an, ad, an ad hoc doom diver. You know? <laughs> uh, but yeah, it's a really awesome little range. And if, if you've really liked what um, Felix has done for mm. the range in the past, because uh, uh, as we said during the end of the week for this, that they've been around for a, a really mm. long time. <laughs> Uh, then suddenly this now opens up to the options for you to, for the, you to almost fill in the gaps with the troops. Because one of the main, big things they did back in the day was they effectively just made um, heroes. Just heroes. Yeah. yeah, They did do uh, dwarves, so they had dwarven rangers. And, they had dwarves, uh, they also slayers. did chaos warriors. And chaos yeah, I think warriors, first yeah. time I ever saw these guys was their dwarf regiment. Yeah. Whenever workshop, we're still doing the ones without knees. Yeah. <laughs> and they were just like, holy crap, they have knees, it's so good. <laughs> Their, their slayers are the slayers of my dwarven army. So, so yeah, yeah, I think that's the exact set. Yeah, that was the hard plastics. Yeah, mm-hmm. they were really good, really nice. Those. Quite a few pages, isn't there? Oh yeah. So this goes back to some of the early stuff. So that's some of the undead orcs and things they've done, which is really nice. Mm. And you've also got some more like the orc shamans and warlords and everything as well. <gasps> I think Felix really likes orcs and dwarves, so, <laughs> so it's that nice much. to see more of that coming to the fore. The wow. throner and the irony that he's sitting on a throne of someone else. <laughs> what his best in life. <laughs> I, I mean, I love those. They're just mm. so cool. <laughs> and I, it's, it's nice that they've done an, an interesting job with the proportions of them as well. Like they've mm. given them like the big bows that you imagine. Know, they're not just humans with orc, orc head. Yeah. Yeah. heads, which yeah, which tends to sometimes be the case, unfortunately. But, yeah, they've actually the, thought, what would the bone structure be? More Neanderthal-like, bigger rib cages. That's I've been cool. looking at all of the different skeletal ones, and each individual miniature has got cuts in the bones in all different places. Mm. It's crazy. The more you look at them, just where they are, in they such have, detail on know, a small When they die, their buddies at them. Well, yeah. <laughs> that's why they're stripped clean. Yeah. <laughs> But yeah, it's a, it's, a, it's a really stunning collection from Felix that is um, 
grown, as I say, from like last month. I mean, as you see, these are the first ones. They were only eight months ago. So, you know, they, they, they did a couple through like their web store and then they immediately yeah. moved over to my mini factory and Patreon and started doing it that way. So, um, he you've got the month. You've got the month. Oh, no, the I ju- approve of the, wo- the word play in that one. Oh, Finny Jones. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> Please don't. <laughs> yeah, it's a, it's amazing range that is coming along quite nicely. Do they, they have it broke down into kind of collections, do they? What have we got? Yeah, so, so. Uh, yeah, they've broken them down into the, the, the different sections. So you've got the demons, the beastmen, the orcs and goblins. A few humans and everything there as well, just to sort of round out the range and stuff as well. So, um, some some nice bits and pieces in there for everyone to sort of dive into and have fun with. Uh, and it, it's one of these things where they've obviously got the baseline for all of this stuff already because of all the different characters that they made. Yeah. So if they wanted to go in and expand the range, there's no end to the amount of options they could they could play with and have fun with. Um, like I, I've really liked some of the ogres and things they've done as well, which is really nice. But yeah, the ogres uh, are lovely. As I say, the uh, the Patreon is available, so um, you can dive in and you can pay a certain amount of month to get your hands on the uh, collections. As we saw, the, the the most recent collection was those sort of barbarians, a kind of dark sun esque Conan esque collection. Um, but they've also got some amazing stuff as well. Oh my god, that's amazing! <laughs> <laughs> wow, yeah. dark god wow. Manticore. Yeah, their their dark god, their knock house warrior range was stunning. Yeah. Um, yeah. I imagine at some point, stuff. I imagine mm. at some point it will come back. Mm. I would imagine they, so. they released them in resin, not not PVC or anything, actual resin. Mm. Um, and they did a cornea version and a Nurgle esque set with a variety of weapons, halberds, hand weapons, additional hand weapons, shields, great weapons. Uh, and they are stunning. I bought multiples of each. I've, I've got the biggest collection of these you will never see, and you can't get them for love nor money. And the sculpts were stunning; they were really yeah. nice. I particularly like the um, the pestilence esque, I suppose, musician who just grabbed his jaw and pulled it down to <gasps> his like his belly, like a python, just detachable jaw, screaming. Um, so they haven't been available as physical models in a long time. I'm not sure how they were sculpted um but if there was a way to resurrect them via the medium of this then that would definitely be yeah the way to go yeah i think most of their stuff started coming out whenever cad first became a thing that people began to use a lot more in the industry yeah it'll be interesting Those yeah. Files might be there somewhere yeah it'll be interesting because they, they they've done reprints of the dwarves every so often yeah. So it'll be interesting to see if they're doing something physical or whether or not they just go down the, the line of doing something fully digital, I guess. But uh, I yeah. really appreciate the armor that they've put on on all their creatures. Yeah. I've really thought about that. Yeah. They don't want them to be hurt. No, I know, but some people just seem to have the animals, don't they? <laughs> Let them get crushed. You watch a film and all of a sudden the horses go down first and then they start <laughs> crying. It's a really nice <laughs> pack, though. It's mm. very nice. Just think about my Northern Alliance. Ah, oh, there you go. It, it requires, it requires the things. In the shopping basket. Mm. Well, no, there's no point putting them in the shopping basket. They're not real. They're all ones and zeros. <laughs> you know. If I had a red. If I had a resin print for you, Jerry, I'd print some. It's all right. I will say. Um, <laughs> I will say that if you are interested in uh, the Arena Deathmatch game, mm. uh, we may have mentioned it back when we did the end of the week. But I think we did, yeah. The, the Arena Deathmatch game actually has a digital version of it that you can play. So you can, if you just want to have fun with the game itself, you can go and check that out and everything as well. So some really cool stuff there from Avatars of War. Keep an eye out every month for new stuff. And uh, I'm sure they'll do something excellent from their back catalogue very, very soon. So. Indeed. Did you win one of our prizes? Find out on our prize claim centre over at ontabletop.com. Here we list all our previous prizes and those who have won. If you see your username, fill out the form to claim your prize. All prizes must be claimed within 30 days. So to round out the show then, we shall be taking a look at a pair of Kickstarters. <laughs> and where are we going to go to first? Then? So we are going to go on a trek first. We're not really. We're not going to... Star Trek. I but, like walking. So, yeah, I, know, I enjoy walking. So Trekking the World published, I've known the tabletop game Trekking the World. Underdogs game are up on Kickstarter with a new title and they're not 
trekking through anyway. Was they're trekking through history. So players are going to head out to different periods of time and rack up experience by visiting as many as they can, hopefully them all, before they get stuck and lost where the clock stops ticking. Hope you've bought packed lunch. So the game is set out for two to five players and you'll be provided a timeline to make your way across. So you visit each event in a chronological order and you'll meet up with historical legends throughout time. The likes of Marie Curie, um, and hope of collecting some experience to put in points before the time runs out. So the game has taken complete inspiration from the marvels of our own world. So they can head back and see where the first chariot was ridden or take a trip with the Wright brothers. So if you are a professional trivia head or also known as a prolific pub dweller, uh, you're going to enjoy the chance to flex your common knowledge. It's the same thing, isn't it, Jerry? It really is, yeah. Yeah. Um, so the game's been pitched for ages 10 plus. It works as a great way to teach younger bald games about historical legends and wonderful events through time. So it's not just a case of visiting legends, giving them a taste of the 21st century, and then on to the next one. You are going to be against the clock and you've got 12 hours each day to travel. So you've got new challenges to face wherever you go and to visit on your inventory. And your inventory... Um, has not your inventory, your itinerary, the word itinerary, same stop. Your itineraries, uh, you've got 24 different uh, things on your itinerary and you can choose from a wealth of different opportunity by challenge that you want to meet. So it's it's a really, really interesting premise. There's a lot of non-fictional references in there, a lot of heads up to trivia. Seems like a lot of fun. You get a lot in the box as well, quite a lot of expensive looking resources too. <laughs> but essentially this is... This is Bill and Ted. Yes. Yes. In, in, in what Rufus was doing when Rufus handed them the phone box, where <laughs> you need to learn history. Yes. Don't get stuck. Go through time and learn history. <laughs> so, so, yeah. so that if you're not a pair of, of would be rock star stoners, this is what you would actually be doing. Exactly. Yeah. The thing that I, I, I really like the look of this, I think the artwork is fantastic. Mm, but I think the thing that's really nice about it is that each of those itineraries is different. So when you sit down to play, you're given a random board. And so you have to fill in the, the requisite parts of your itinerary yeah. in different ways each time you sit down to play and then manage that against the sort of set collect element and then spending the right amount of time in specific instances in history as well. Mm-hmm. I like that there's 108 of those of sort of like famous people and locations to go and visit at the same time too. So it means that you've got a really big deck of cards to play around with and it means you're not going to see everything in one run through. Because one of the things that always annoys me with games like this is sometimes it's like, oh, okay, well, well I know I'm definitely going to see these cards. I can build a strategy around that because you've got the different itineraries, yeah. because you've got the different location cards and all that kind of thing as well. You've got some really interesting ways in which you can approach this each time you sit down to play. And I think the education element to that, I think, is really, really good as well. Mm-hmm. I, think that's, I think that's really cool. So Yeah, I agree with you. It's um, 17 days on this one. But it is confirmed to be going to retail, so don't panic if you don't catch the Kickstarter. So yeah. if you do have a look at I, I, I really want to right. give this a go at a convention in the next year or so. Yeah. I really want to give it a go. Hopefully it'll be at UK Games Expo because I think this one could be a lot of fun. I think. Mm-hmm. Oh, I agree. And now, and now it's just got me thinking, where are Underdog going to go next? Are we going to trek <laughs> through the prehistoric? Are we going to trek through the countryside? Through space. But, no, all jokes aside, it is great to see a game system grow and especially seeing how well this title is currently doing on Kickstarter as well. It's great to see where else we're going to hit on some other Ooh, That might be a swing to the spuds for some people. Go on. The solo mode is Kickstarter exclusive. Oh, there we go. Mm-hmm. Well, I mean, it's not a big ask for the pledge on this one. So, no, $50, $50 37 yeah. quid. Pretty cheap for a board game nowadays. Yeah. That yeah. is, yeah. So, in all fairness, you're probably getting a better deal than you will at retail as well. You will definitely get a better deal on Kickstarter than you do at retail. But have a go easy. on the tabletop simulator and see what you think. Yeah, mm-hmm. it's worth a go playing on mm-hmm. tabletop simulator myself. I am, I do a lot of my board games solo, so my eyes did lit up, lit up as soon as I did see this. But given that it is an exclusive, as you said, mm-hmm. later down the line, hopefully it's something they might add in. Mm-hmm. Yeah, maybe an expansion they'll sell on later. Mm-hmm. Fingers, fingers crossed. About 17 days left. On that one. Sweet. What's our last for this week, Ben? 
And the last one we're going to be looking at is from Brain Games Publishing, uh, who a lot of people will know created the exceptionally fun dexterity-based flicking game, Ice Cool. Mm. I know you like penguins, Free. That <laughs> it's adorable. Yeah, with, ice, <laughs> with Ice Cool, you had to pick fl- flick penguins. That's hard to say. Flick penguins around a school trying to catch each other before uh, the uh, teacher came back to your lesson. It was a very fun game. Really cool idea. They did some really nice stuff with the weighted mi- sort of like uh, miniatures that you kicked around and everything like that. Their newest game, Iron Forest, literally takes things to the next level. Hey. <laughs> oh, because <laughs> with this, you have the same game that expands out from the one box, very sort of like Russian doll style. <laughs> it also comes with that massive, huge tower that sort of represents the canopy of the trees and all that kind of thing. <clears throat> Pardon me. This game is now two to four players. And then you are split up into two teams. One side takes on the role of the animal clans and the other side takes on the role of the Iron Force. And it's all about the animals. No squirrels, I'm afraid. Is that a hedgehog? There is a hedgehog uh, fighting (laughs) against the forces of the Iron Iron Mechs trying to take over the forests around them. (laughs) Each of the different uh, factions then comes with their own asymmetrical objectives that they're trying to complete by getting around the board in different ways and completing all the different goals. That could be to go through certain gates, land in certain areas, hit certain tokens, just hit other meeples effectively on the on the table. Although I guess they wouldn't call these meeples. But I'm going to call them meeples for now. We'll yeah. Call them weeples, um, like weeples. a meeple and a weeble. There we go. Yeah, yeah. Meeple we'll wobble. Meeple wobble. <laughs> <laughs> some, some, some people some... bots to me. I'm happy. <laughs> But yeah, I, I think this looks really, really good fun. Um, Ice Cool is is fantastic, oh. really good, and very accessible dexterity based game. This is sort of aiming for the same market, sort of your kids and families and things, sort of turning things up a notch as well, because obviously it's a little bit more in depth with the um, scenarios and the objectives and all the different things you can do there. The other thing they've added in, they've added in sort of things like variable but uh, powers for each of the different factions. So you'll have things that will make it easier. Maybe you'll get um, reflix i guess and all that mm-hmm. kind of thing as well which would be pretty cool um but yeah it, it seems like one of those really fun ones a little bit like um we're talking about with uh check trekking through history mm-hmm. where i hope this will pop up at a uh, convention this year so that you mm-hmm. can just sit and give it a go um you will inevitably use lose the pieces they will go flying off the table mm-hmm. just make sure you've got a blanket down we've yeah. we've heard it before put a blanket down to catch all the pieces and then you can just gather it up afterwards when you play the game there you go <laughs> it's like painting but use it for board games which is cool, which is nice so, instead of putting so, down a tarp yeah yeah don't put that piece collecting i love <laughs> like i love in trailers of, of dexterity games how easy they make it look i mean yeah. jerry's watched me play airflix dexterity games are uh, not up no, I, I, they're always so much fun, but you always, there's always someone you're playing a dexterity game. They're, they're professional. They're fantastic. Oh, and then, yeah. I, I just think fun starting yeah. oh, oh. I, I love the idea that you've got the little catapult in this one. The catapult yeah, fab. Like flinged up onto the next level. Mm-hmm. It's really cool. It's a really nice idea to kind of like, mm. again, add another level uh, to the game and sort of the way it plays and, and sort of the intricacies, intricacies of all of it and everything like that. Mm-hmm. The other thing I really like is the like the, there is something really pleasurable sometimes about playing a dexterity based game that has a tactile feel to it. Mm. Like you get the same from like Crokinole and, and games like that. And as you say, things like Airflix or whatever as well, there's something nice about flicking one of those and it actually doing what you want and like learning to get a little bit of skill out of the process. Cause there's so many people that I've played ice cool with who can actually like curve the yes. characters Spending through stuff doors yeah. to hit other things or sometimes, and it's a totally legitimate strategy, hit, flick them so hard at the bottom that they leap over walls and all that kind of thing. It's mad when Skill. you see them doing that kind of thing. It's crazy. But uh, Like that one guy who plays pool way too often? Exactly, oh, yeah. yeah. So if you've got some high school <laughs> veterans, this will be the next step up for them, you see. Mm. So, mm. so yeah. But yeah, looks really awesome. I think it'll be good fun. It's already funded. Mm. There's quite a few days left on the campaign, but if you want to dive in, dive in and give it a go, make sure to check it out. I'm sure they're going to be at conventions as well this year because uh, brain games have been everything that I've been to in the past, mm-hmm. showing off ice cool and stuff. And it's wow, always a, a good lot set. Higher than so. I thought. Yeah, it's yeah, it's quite. Yeah, I, I didn't expect it to be that high. Person to scale. <laughs> yeah, I don't know how big he is. He could be. Dang me. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, whenever people see you on camera, Jerry, I guess it's just like, is he just incredibly big or did they make a super small game? Very, very small <laughs> game. I like it. Oh, mine's. 
<gasps> that's interesting. Um, I, oh. I like the idea that they're doing dex game or dexterity based games. I said this when we played Airflix. Um, it's an interesting mechanic. Yeah, that is a good way of getting people to play who may not be gamers. Yes. This is a sale. You just have to flick things around and knock over other stuff is easier yeah. than going, here's yeah. a game, here's what yeah, you can universe. do in your turn, here's your five activations. Yeah. Now, obviously, these activations cost double because they're a thing. And by the end <laughs> of it, your friends who aren't gamers, their eyes have glazed over. Whereas this, you're going, have you ever played squirrel, video? Let's go. Yeah. 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 Um, Flick base, get into these plays. It's, yeah. it's, why, it's why games like Clask have always done so well. If, if you've never played Clask, I think it's a really good mm-hmm. one to pick up, especially if you have mm-hmm. people in your family that are younger or, as Jerry's saying, like people who aren't necessarily into the hobby board games that we normally would talk about. If you want something that's a little bit inter- a little bit sort of more classic in that sense of like a tabletop pastime, Clask is really good. It got this sort of like the feel of something like air hockey, but with, oh, yeah. uh, with less less of the expense. <laughs> of catapult, catapult fueled was one of my favourite dexterity games. Did you ever? Mm. Did you ever play it? It was just knocking down rolls, virtual versus with a catapult. <laughs> oh, it was great. Was the, there was a spaceship one you and me played, Jerry. I think. Oh, I can't remember the name of it. That's going to annoy me now. <laughs> we'll come back to you in dexterity the dexterity game. In a, yes. In a, in a, in a Shout way, it. So. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. There's a little spaceship dexterity game you and you played on. Oh, account. so they've still got their early bird pledge up. Well, oh, that's cool. For now, when you yeah. guys see this, it, it may be gone by then, unless it's <laughs> yeah. limited. Oh, it might be limited to back. No, two hours left. Yeah, unlucky folks, you're not yeah. seeing this in two Sorry. hours' time. Um, yeah, fascinating stuff. You can get ice cool one and two as well as optional binds if you haven't got the originals. So you could yeah. pick them all up in one foul swoop. Yeah, if games like this, though, I would recommend get a second catapult because you know someone's going to break it halfway through a game, <laughs> or someone's going to hit you in the eye at some point. Yeah, <laughs> That's yeah, how it works. It's going to hit the wall. It's <laughs> by a load of plastic rulers. That's all you need. Just lean back in your seat and flick, flick away. I, I, I did that in the uh, in the classroom. Put it on the edge of the desk and flick paper balls into the air and stuff. Yeah. So, yeah. See, it's relive your wasted childhood. With and pieces. then it made it made really annoying sounds for the teachers when you flicked oh. it and then drew, and then yeah, drew it along the side of the desk. <laughs> <laughs> That's all good in the hood. Do that at home, kids. <laughs> and on that note, I think it's time to say goodbye. Don't forget, if you want a chance to win to Brook, comment the below. whole of Tobruk. All of yeah. Tobruk, all of it, <laughs> except the Australians. The earlier bits of Tobruk when it wasn't full of Australians. Uh, comment below, be a subscriber, yada, yada, yada. You know the, you know the score. Uh, we will be back on Sunday over on tabletop.com for the XLBS, uh, where we may be talking hobby. We'll almost guaranteed be talking bullshit. <laughs> <laughs> if you don't want to uh, to come over and join us for that, we will be back next Friday. But otherwise, enjoy your weekend, and we'll see you anon. Go ahead and check out our other content on screen now. And while you're at it, why not hit subscribe and remember to ding our dong. Go on, you know you want to click it. Go on. <laughs>